Hello you lovely cubs, it's the Dragon Lord here back again with another video, part 5 of what if Yuji Itadori had the six eyes. Anyway, before I get into it, I just want to say thank you guys for getting Spencer to 200 subscribers. It did take you guys a while, but I'm not complaining. Love it. Love that energy, keep it up. I'm not asking anything for part 6, because, well, I thought to myself, you know what? You guys deserve part 6 as well. So part 6 is in the works. It's being worked on right now. But I do hope and I do ask that you guys like and maybe comment down below. It helps this video get to new audiences. And if you enjoyed the what if, you can share it with other people. Share the love. With that out of the way, join the new Discord. Link is in the description. And yeah, let's get into it. Hey, are you actually alive? Nobara asked Yuji, poking him. Yeah, I'm back, he replied, stopping her. Well, well, greetings aside, I'm sure the Kyoto team is excited about getting started with the competition, Principal Yaga declared as he started explaining the first match. You will all compete in a race to hunt cursed spirits. The team that hunts the Great Two Cursed Spirit first wins. Of course, if the Great Two Cursed Spirit doesn't get hunted in the allotted time, then we will move on to declare the team that hunted the most Cursed Spirits as the winner. Principal Yaga said as he moved on entering the school with the other event viewers. Let's get going. We've got a lot to discuss. Megami would say as him, Nobara and the three other second years... Maki, Panda, and Inumaki followed him. Let's get going, Junpei. Itadori would say as both him and Junpei followed close behind. All seven of them would sit inside of a waiting area as they talked, with Yuji and Junpei both explaining their situations. The group was very understanding. So what do we do now? Do we change strategies? Maki would ask, thinking about their strategy to win. Well, that would depend on Yuji and Junpei, and what they can do, Panda retorted. What can you do? Maki asked curiously. Itadori thought about it for a moment. Punch and kick, he'd say confidently. We have enough of that, Panda answered. Magmi was about to speak, but Junpei exhaled a massive sigh. If you explain it like that, their reactions would be obvious. Well, as for me, I can do a bit of basic combat, but I'm definitely nowhere near Yuji's level. And I can also do this. Moondregs, Junpei would summon his Shikigami. Moondregs can resist most physical attacks, and as for offense, he can shoot out tentacles imbued with poison. I'm pretty confident in fighting alongside him. Junpei would say, smiling. What do you think about this, Fushigiro? Maki asked his opinion. Well, his Shikigami does seem capable. It depends on how he uses it in the end. But also, I wanted to make one more statement before we move on. It's about Yuji's strength, Megami would say, capturing everyone's attention. Itadori, before he was dead, was able to fight a special great curse spirit on his own, and beat it. Nobara can testify to that. 
And in terms of strength, if everyone from Kyoto and Tokyo fought him without cursed energy, well, he'd win. Megumi would say, surprising everyone a bit. Well, if you say so, it's pretty believable, Maki said, intrigued by Yuji. Um, I don't know if it means a lot, but for the last two and a half weeks, I was training alongside Gojo Sensei and Yuji, and in Yuji's fight with Gojo about three days ago, he was able to blitz Gojo Sensei's senses and also landed a hit on him while Sensei was using his limitless. Junpei retorted as he started explaining the events from his point of view, in great detail, as if he was watching a movie. Yuji, is this true? Megumi asked in a serious tone. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Then, if everyone were to use cursed energy, there's a big chance that Yuji would win, even if everyone from Kyoto and Tokyo teamed up. Maki replied a bit terrified of Yuji's strength. We can leave Toto's on to Itadori then, Panda replied, putting his hand on Itadori's back. Toto? Itadori asked curiously. He's the strongest member on the Kyoto team's side. He's strong enough to beat a special grade, so fight like your life depends on it, Maki would say. With that, this meeting is over. Let's head out. Nobara would say as they made their way to their starting positions in the forest. Yuji, are you okay? Megmi asked as they walked to the forest entrance. Yeah, everything's fine. You sure? Nothing's going on? Ah, well, something did happen. It made me want to never lose again, you know? Yeah, I don't want to lose either. At that moment, Nobara punched Itadori in the side. You know, you could have messaged us at least, she said blushing before running up to Maki-senpai. Begin. Gojo's voice was heard on the intercom as the event started. Everyone set out right away. There was a small curse spirit in front of them. Split up! He's here! Itadori would say as he jumped ahead of everyone. Right in front of him... Aoi Todo had landed. Come at me all at once! Todo screamed, ready to fight them. Sorry, but your opponent is me, Yuji said, his cursed energy spiking, putting an immense pressure on the surrounding area. In an instant, Itadori kicked Todo in the face, sending him back a bit, giving everyone on Tokyo team a chance to run past him. Todo arched his back as he spit out a bit of blood. Nice speed! Nice power! He got into a battle stance. I'll return the favor first year. Guard like your life depends on it! Toto yelled out as he rushed at Itadori with insane speed. He punched Itadori, the surrounding area getting devastated by the wind pressure. Seriously? Toto yelled out. His fist was in Itadori's palm, and it looked like Itadori had taken no damage. Ah! <laughs> My bad. I took you for granted. I'll be fighting you for real now, Itadori would say, taking off his glasses and throwing them to the side. Divergent fist, Itadori would say, hitting Toto, hitting a black flash and that trillionth of a second cursed energy after, blowing Toto back far as he fell against a tree. Itadori walked up to him as Toto was coughing up blood. Nice! He'd yell out as he stood up facing Itadori once more. What's your name, first year? Toto asked. Itadori Yuji. Itadori, I have a question for you. What kind of woman is your type? Toto asked in a serious expression. Why are you asking me that right now? Yuji asked curiously. Don't worry, I'm just appraising you. I don't really get it, but, hmm, I guess, if I had to say, maybe a tall woman with a big ass? Maybe? Like Jennifer Lawrence, yeah, Itadori replied, giving it some thought. Toto's eyes widened as he looked at the sky, crying his eyes out. 
Seems like we're best friends. When you just learned my name? Yuji asked, confused. At that moment, bullets got fired at Yuji, who dodged them easily. Interesting, Yuji would say, firing a large amount of condensed cursed energy towards the area he got shot from. Blue imitation. He yelled as it had similar effect to the cursed technique of Satoru Gojo, but a lot weaker. Mai, who had shot the bullets, got caught in it as she got roughed up. However, she kept shooting bullets. Itadori started running away from the bullets as he ran towards the blue-haired girl. New, shadow style, simple domain, quick draw, she would say as she slashed towards Itadori at great speeds. He easily dodged it. Sorry about this. Divergent fist. It knocked her into the ground with the wind pressure alone. In front of Itadori stood Mekamaru, who he was currently charging towards. They've surrounded me. Are they trying to kill me? Oh, bring it on, Itadori thought as he rushed towards Mekamaru at great speeds. Ultra Cannon! Mekamaru would yell out as he shot out a beam of cursed energy at Itadori. That won't work on me, Itadori would say as the beam seemed to bounce towards another direction when it was a few inches away from Itadori. Itadori sent out a punch towards Mekamaru. In an instant, an arrow landed in front of him. Divergent kick, Itadori said, instantly arriving before the one who had shot the arrow. You need to go first. Divergent fist, Itadori said, punching Noritoshi Kamo as he tried blocking it with his bow. However, he got sent flying. Who's next, Itadori said, but he had disappeared again. Wow, you are quite high, aren't you? Itadori would say as he had appeared behind Momo, who was flying on her broom in the sky. I couldn't sense him, she thought, but in that instant she got sent flying down. You're the last one, Itadori would appear behind Mekamaru, his palm already on Mekamaru's back. It's over. Divergent palm. Itadori would say as cursed energy hit Mekamaru's back, temporarily shutting down his puppet systems as it was overloaded with cursed energy. Shall we continue our fight? Itadori would say as he walked up to Toro. That was splendid. You are definitely my best friend. Toro yelled out as he got into a stance. T Toro... If we work together, we can beat him, Kamo yelled as he came back. His bow was broken and he looked quite hurt. All of you get lost, Toto yelled out, covering the entire forest. You've already lost to him. I will fight him. If I win or not will depend on myself. Don't you dare intervene. Toto would say in a serious tone as the others all left, with Miwa, the blue-haired girl, grabbing Mekamaru and making a dash for it. You best kill him, Toto, Kamo would say, leaving as well. Now that those pesky flies are gone, shall we get back to it, my best of friendo? Toto said, getting into a battle stance. Now you're getting me fired up, Itadori would say, getting into a battle stance as well. I won't hold back, Toto yelled as he rushed at Itadori. A clap sound could be heard as he and Toto switched places. Behind me, Itadori realized, dodging Toto's attack as he was about to land his own. Again, they swapped places. What is this, Itadori thought as he dodged another of Toto's attack. Divergent fist, Itadori threw out his fist at high speed. As he was about to land it on Toto's face, they swapped places again, as he himself got hit in the face. Itadori took a step back as he spit out a bit of blood. I see now. Every time you clap your hands, we swap positions. But I'm guessing there's more to it, Itadori said as he got into another battle stance. Correct. I can swap places with anything that has cursed energy, but this doesn't apply just to myself. I can also swap you with something that has cursed energy, Toto would say, revealing his cursed technique. I see. Toto, I'll be going all out now. After all, you're my best friend, Itadori would say, making Toto very happy as a tear fell from his eyes. 
Bring it! Toto would say, however, before he could react, Itadori had already knocked him down. Divergent fist. Augmented. Itadori would say, hitting Toto in the face, hitting a black flash and hitting that trillionth of a second later cursed energy. This time, however, the cursed energy came from both inside and outside of Yuji's fist, the technique he had been making for the last three days. Toto laid knocked out on the floor. Man, ten seconds seems to be my limit. I've got about nine seconds left of divergent step, Itadori thought. It was the name of his high-speed movement technique. He started running through the forest. Everybody was fighting their fights. He could tell. He could sense everything within the forest. I'll head over to the Great Two and win this, Itadori thought as he started making his way over. Everyone was having their battles, with Maki fighting Mai, Nobura fighting Momo, Megami fighting Kamo, Panda fighting Mekamaru, and with Miwa fighting Junpei, whilst Inumaki was hunting cursed spirits. New, shadow style, simple domain, Miwa said as she slashed at Junpei with quick speed. I'm sorry, but your draw is slow compared to Yuji and Gojo Sensei's fists. Junpei would say, dodging her blade and putting his foot down on it, as he spun his body to kick Miwa in the face. You fought Gojo Satoru and that monster? Miwa asked, stunned. Ah, uh, those two weeks hurt so much, but I have to grow stronger. I need my vengeance, Junpei said, summoning Moondregs. I'll give you some advice. Forfeit this fight, Junpei would say, rushing at Miwa together with Moondrex. I can't do that. I, I want to win, she'd say, preparing to slash at Junpei. However, her blade got caught in Moondrex's tentacles. As she got stung by the other one, poison quickly started spreading over her body. A poison user? She'd say, coughing up blood and jumping back. <laughs> The poison will spread over your body. Soon you lose all motor function. I recommend you forfeit and go get the antidote from Gojo Sensei, Junpei said in a serious but also movie villain like tone. Dang it, Miwa said, leaving. Next time I'll win, she said as she had to leave. Junpei's poison was a lot more effective than before, to the point where it could easily kill first grade curses. I wonder how Itadori is doing, Junpei said out loud as he looked at the sky. He ran to the closest cursed energy nearby, which was Nobara. Need any help, Nobara-san? Junpei asked to join in on her fight. And so, after a few minutes, the only fighters remaining for the Kyoto team were Mekamaru, who was currently fighting Panda and Kamo, who was still fighting Megami. Maki had defeated her sister Mai with relative ease. Together with Junpei, Momo didn't stand a chance against Nobara, and Toto had also been eliminated. And Miwa had to forfeit because of Junpei's poison. Shortly after Momo had been beaten, Gojo's voice could be heard on the intercom. Team Tokyo has won the Spirit Bash race. Yuji Itadori has exercised the Grade 2 curse. Gojo announced me, marking the end of the event. Toto woke up from the announcement. Nice going, brother, he'd say happy for Itadori. Seems like you guys won, Kamo said a bit disappointed as he walked away from Megami. Come out, Itadori spoke as he looked over at a tree. He could feel a first great cursed energy. A first great cursed spirit came out from behind the tree and rushed at Itadori. I can't believe they released something like you here. Well, it doesn't matter. You'd easily get exercised by any of my friends, Itadori would say, landing a divergent fist on the cursed spirit's face, as the cursed spirit died in one blow. Care to explain why a first great spirit got released? Principal Gakuganji? Gojo asked in a serious tone. I have no idea. I had no part in this. The principal replied. We'll investigate the first great cursed spirit's appearance later. Let's go congratulate the students and treat the wounded. 
Principal Yagi would say. At that moment, all of the remaining cursed spirits in the event area disappeared. All of their extermination causes. Unknown. A barrier appeared over the event area. You, Itadori would say as he picked up a faint cursed energy, a familiar one. He quickly rushed over towards where it was. Inumaki, Megami, and Kamo started fighting against the special great curse spirit Hanami, who was overpowering them. Where did this special great come from? Megami asked. Their fight continued, with Inumaki trying to use the words blast away to send the cursed spirit flying. However, he just coughed up a lot of blood. Kamo and Megami started working together to stop the cursed spirit from doing as it pleases. Shortly after, Panda and Mekamaru appeared, as they started helping out. The cursed spirit still easily overpowered them. All of them. As even Mekamaru's ultra cannon seemed to do nothing. Ten minutes passed, with Inumaki-san trying once more. Blast away! This time it works as Hanami gets flung away. That kid has quite the power, Hanami would think as he got up, but he ended up coughing up blood. Moondrex, he heard as he turned around. Behind him stood Maki and Junpei who had pierced his skin with his shikigami. Maki ran in, going for a blow using her sword, which was able to harm Hanami a bit. Hanami backed off, getting Moondrek's tentacles out of him as he seemed to slowly heal the poison. At that moment, he senses Megami behind him as he got hit in the head pretty hard, both his three branch eyebrows being knocked off. Here, Maki, switch. I don't want to use that staff, Megami would say, handing her the three-section staff as Hanami stood before them, healing. Maki grabs the three-section staff and laughs as she spins it, striking Hanami, sending him flying. Hanami regains his footing in a small river. Right as he regains his footing, though, he dodges two of Moondrek's tentacles. However, he feels a piercing sensation in his stomach. As he looks, he sees two more tentacles. As he is about to counterattack, he prepares to send his cursed buds towards Junpei. However, he gets hit in the back of the neck by Maki, who uses Playful Cloud. As he coughs up blood, he sees Megami right in front of him, who slashes at his neck, which he is barely able to dodge once more. Demon dogs. Totality, Megami says as a massive werewolf-like dog attacks Hanami. Enough of this! Hanami says, tearing off the cloth covering his left arm. In an instant, roots start sprouting everywhere as Maki and Megami have to dodge. Moondrex, Junpei said, jumping over the wood as four poison-imbued tentacles launch towards Hanami at great speeds. Hanami dodges them easily as he counterattacks sending cursed butts towards Junpei, who used Moondrex to block them. Megami fell to one knee. His earlier fights had exhausted him extremely, and using his curse technique as much as he had wasn't good. We need to fall back, Junpei yelled out, however Maki seemed perplexed. We can't stop fighting until reinforcements come. Both Kamo and Inumaki aren't in a state to fight. Pana has almost exhausted his course, and Mekamaru's attacks just don't hold any effect, so we have to keep fighting until at least Toto shows up. Maki yelled out, rushing in with playful cloud. As she was inches away from hitting Hanami, wood sprouted up, as it was about to pierce her head. Maki-senpai! Junpei and Megami yelled out. The atmosphere changed. It felt heavy. Oi, haven't you caused enough problems already? Yuji spoke, his voice making everyone shocked and leaving Hanami terrified. At this very moment, Junpei, Maki, Megumi, and Hanami felt a great deal of cursed energy pressure, more than any of them had felt before. Hanami turned around slowly, shaking. Itadori's eyes were fixated on him. Itadori put down Maki who he had saved. Maki-senpai... Take Megami and get to Gojo Sensei. Junpei joined them, Itadori would say, walking up to Hanami. Maki stopped him as she spoke. You can't fight that monster alone. If you're gonna f 
at least stall for time, then use this, she said, handing over the three-section staff, Playful Cloud. That's kind of you, but I don't need that, Itadori said, turning around as he vanished for a second. In an instant, Hanami's right shoulder and arm were blown off completely. I aimed for your head. Nice dodge, Itadori said as he started fighting Hanami one-on-one. -on -one. That guy, he's insane, Maki thought as she ran up to Megami, supporting him for a bit. Yuji will win. Let's get out of here, Junpei said as all three of them started running away. Yuji started barraging Hanami. His fists were fast, and every time he landed an attack, Black Flash would be triggered. Hanami sprouted flowers all around, however Itadori's concentration wasn't lost. At this very moment, Hanami was getting pummeled. Hanami jumped back as a massive flower bloomed behind him. Inside were hundreds of thousands of cursed buds, as they all got sent flying towards Itadori. Is that all? Itadori asked in an intimidating voice, as the cursed buds got deflected by his simple copy of the Limitless Technique. Hanami stood shocked. He didn't know what Itadori was doing right now, so he thought Itadori had also inherited Limitless along with the Six Eyes. This was new information, and it meant that he could never beat Itadori. This was obviously not the case, but Hanami had no way to confirm this. Hanami didn't know that Itadori just made his own version. Vessel of Sukuna, we wish for you to join us, Hanami said. He knew it was this or fight to the death. Get lost, Itadori replied, blitzing Hanami's senses as he was about to hit a punch on Hanami's face. Wood sprouted up as Itadori dodged instinctively. Very well, Hanami said with Itadori just a few meters away from him. Hanami's mask cracked. Yoiki Tenkai, Dai Kokai, Hanami said as he unleashed his domain expansion. In an instant, Itadori was caught in Hanami's domain as a massive pasture of flowers surrounded him. It seemed like Hanami grew stronger physically, however Itadori knew he had to get out of the domain as soon as he could. In an instant, the flower on Hanami's left shoulder shot out a beam towards Itadori. Itadori punched with both his fists at the same time against the beam. As he released his divergent cannon technique in both of his fists, an abbreviation of divergent fist, where instead of cursed energy falling up once, it was followed up five to ten times, meaning that in a trillionth of a second, one hit could count as ten or even twelve. The beam and his fists collided as a massive explosion happened. After the smoke settled, Itadori still stood. His fists were lightly burned. His divergent cannon technique wasn't able to completely handle the technique of Hanami, and his simple version of Limitless using cursed energy was only able to hold back a little bit of Hanami's attack. The rest, Itadori just had to tank. It makes sense. I mean, it's not a cursed technique that I'm using, so... Fighting off a curse technique is not as simple as I thought. I need to get stronger, Itadori thought. Remarkable. However, this will be the end, Hanami would say, rushing at Itadori with great speed. Speeds he hadn't shown before. His domain had amplified his strength and speed as well. Hanami was about to land a punch on Itadori. However, Itadori disappeared. Where did he go? Hanami thought as Itadori's cursed energy seemingly disappeared. Did he teleport outside of the domain? That's impossible! Thoughts were racing, but at that moment Hanami realized. Itadori hadn't left the domain right now. His cursed energy could be felt everywhere inside of the domain. Itadori was moving so fast that Hanami couldn't make out where he was at all. He couldn't register it. Divergent step, divergent cannon, Itadori said, appearing behind Hanami in an instant. Before Hanami could even turn his head, he had already been hit in the back as he got sent flying. He hit his own domain barrier as he got up slowly. He was bleeding profusely and he had to focus everything on healing right now. 
Monster, Hanami thought, however at that moment his guard was up as he thought he saw Itadori in front of him. No, a buff, he thought as he looked up. Where are you looking, Divergent Cannon Barrage? Itadori said as he started hitting Hanami constantly, with Hanami focusing everything he had on defense right now. Itadori hit Hanami tens of times every second. Four more seconds, Itadori thought as he punched faster and harder, every punch he landed hitting five to ten times in a trillionth of a second after with cursed energy. Meanwhile, he was still using his divergent step constantly to hit Hanami from every side. Two more seconds, Itadori thought as his body started creaking. As he punched again, Hanami's domain broke. Hanami, who was purely focusing on defense right now, felt a great backlash from his domain dispersing. Divergent cannon, Itadori said, continuing his barrage, hitting even faster than before as Hanami got pushed back a great amount. Divergent cannon, Itadori said, hitting Hanami one more time. As his fist fell down, both his arms were hanging. Itadori coughed up blood, as blood also started pouring from his nose, profusely. A great amount of steam came from his body in an instant, to the point that Hanami even thought it was hot, almost as hot as Jogo's flame. <laughs> Itadori laughed. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm still standing and you've used up all your strength, Hanami said confused. Fool, you were all <laughs> already dead after the first second, Itadori said as Hanami looked down at his body. There were multiple hole holes all throughout his body. His left arm had also been blown up. I can still regen- Hanami tried to say, but in that instant he felt it within his own body were the hundreds if not thousands of blows of cursed energy backlash of Itadori as it was running rampant throughout his body, going on a rampage. His veins started bulging, his body twisted as his fingers blew up, his arms blew up. No, not like this, Hanami yelled out. See you in hell, Itadori said as Hanami's body twisted and blew up, covering the entire area in his blood, before it started dissipating. The veil which covered the area started dissipating, as Gojo was in the air. I'll leave the rest to you, Gojo-sensei, Itadori said as he fell backwards to be caught by Toto. Nice fight. Brother, he spoke. Gojo looked down at Hidadori and smirked. He knew what happened as he took care of the rest. And that is where part five of What If Itadori Had the Six Eyes ends. If you lovely cubs enjoyed today's part, please do like and subscribe and do comment down below what you thought of it. I'm gonna now explain a few things because I've created a few techniques for Itadori to use, but I've not gone into detail. So I will now do that. If you wanna skip that, the time's on screen to where the rest of the ending of today's part is. So I'll start with Divergent Fist Augmented. It's basically the same as Divergent Fist, but he puts a lot more cursed energy behind it. If the normal output is 100%, now he's putting in 120, 130, 150%. Furthermore, Divergent Step, this is the technique where he uses Divergent Fist in his legs, um, which is Divergent Kick. Uh, he uses it in his legs to bounce off of any surface, but he can actually bounce off of so i've not explained it but yuji can just like gojo see cursed energy in great detail even in the atmosphere so what he does is he can also bounce off of that by kind of creating a solid object but not a solid object at the same time think a bit of um how that one guy from my hero academia uses his technique to bounce off of stuff uh, I, I don't know what it's called. It's uh, the where he makes like an invisible rubbery barrier and then he can bounce off of that. It's kind of similar to that, but it's not the exact same. Uh, and he just he can create those platforms midair. 
uh, but Divergent Kick basically is his high mobility move. But Divergent Step, or Divergent Kick is both a mobility move and also a thing, but that's just his normal move. He can use that without recall. Now, Divergent Step is the one where I said that he could only use that 10 seconds. So basically what happens there is he does the exact same thing as with Divergent Cannon, where instead of the Cursed Energy following up once, it follows up a lot more. It follows up five to ten times could even be more it just depends on his concentration which this move allows him to move so fast to the point where even gojo sensei and he himself have difficulty sensing where he is so the cursed energy that he holds just almost disappears because that's how fast he moves and obviously his image also moves like after images could be put but then he's weakening himself because divergent step goes quicker it's kind of one of his ultimate moves that i've created um but it's very limited then there's divergent cannons so as i've said divergent fist is where it's basically divergent kick but it follows up Divergent Cannon is the same thing, but he can use it more often. Only reason is because he's not using it constantly. With Divergent uh, Step, he's using it constantly. It's just constantly going. So every millisecond, not even... Yeah, like every millisecond, because it's a trillionth of a second. But every millisecond, he's doing hundreds of Divergent uh basically kicks so if not thousands because it's every trillionth of a second um so he's doing thousands of those divergent kicks then there's divergent cannon divergent cannon is less recoil because he's not using it constantly it's basically just only when he punches uh so when he punches there's five to ten times depending on how he basically just chooses that himself because when he punches it's how long his fist stays on them that the cursed energy can basically slam into them so it just depends on how long he can keep his fist on so it's five to ten times depending on how much recoil they get and how fast he is but yeah that's divergent cannon it's basically just divergent fist but uh, with multiple hits of cursed energy uh, the barrage is the same thing he just keeps punching now reason why he can only use divergent step 10 seconds is because it taxes his body a lot yuji is already very strong but i think anybody would be taxed even if they had yuji strength with that amount of cursed energy just flowing constantly through his body that fast then there is his imitation of blue so he's imitated blue by just doing the same thing blue does but with cursed energy in the atmosphere it's a lot weaker it's nowhere near as close as gojo's blue uh, what it basically does is if gojo could use blue to destroy an entire town or an entire village yuji can use blue to destroy half a tree uh his imitation of blue so yeah if he uses it against a human that is physically a bit stronger or a jujutsu sorcerer it's not gonna have that much effect it's more of a getaway move like a blow away it's just a poorly made imitation but it could be helpful in some uh situations his recreation of the barrier uh technique that gojo has the limitless passive as we could say is just his version of basically gojo the so gojo divides the space between him and the enemy and in infinite an infinite amount of times that's why it seems like they come to a stop no they just become slower yuji does something else instead of doing that he basically just deflects it by making a sort of small explosion of cursed energy um but he also has kind of warped so a more advanced version that he will eventually unlock and this is kind of a spoiler is where he will warp the cursed energy uh by kind of combining the positive and the negative kind of like hollow purple uh so yeah it's a bit difficult to explain right now i'll probably explain it more in detail of the part itself when that get revealed but yeah that's pretty much it i think i've covered all of the techniques junpei did get stronger too uh which is normal i mean who wouldn't get stronger after training with gojo 
Uh, I mean, you can obviously see Yuji getting a lot stronger. But yeah, Junpei, Shikigami, same thing with Megumi. He'll get stronger over time. And yeah, I think that's really it. So that should be all of it. Hope that clears out a few issues. With that all out of the way, join the Discord if you haven't already. Like and subscribe. We love to have you in the community. And yeah, my name is the Dragon Lord, and I will be signing out.